Hello and welcome back to my channel. Now, a few weeks ago, I published a video on how to record two USB mics at once on a PC using Voice Meter, and I got quite an interesting question. Somebody said, thank you for the video. I bought an 80 2020 USB Plus to sing karaoke on YouTube. I have tried to record my song using Audacity and it only recorded my voice, not the music from YouTube. Can you please help me to record both? So that is what we're going to do in this video. We're going to have a look at how you could record your voice or an acoustic instrument through a USB microphone on top of a YouTube backing track. I post regular videos on home recording made easy, so if that sounds like something you're interested in, do subscribe to the channel and press the little bell if you want to get notifications of when I've uploaded new videos. If you like this video, do give it a thumbs up, it really helps me out. And any comments or questions, post them below, I love to read them all, and they do help me decide what kind of content to create next, as you can see. So let's crack on and have a look at how you do this. I'm going to use voice meter as the engine to do this. This is fantastic free software that you can download for PC only, I'm afraid. So this is not for Mac users. You can get more advanced versions of it that use more inputs, but we don't need to do that for this purpose. So I'm just downloading the basic voice meter. I've already downloaded and installed it. Now I think this is brilliant utility for this kind of thing. So if you do download it and use it, it is free to use, but they do ask if you donate something, if you do use it, so it's donateware. So we're going to use that. And as our recording software, we're going to use Audacity because it's dead simple and it's free. And for this purpose, again, we don't need to do anything complicated. It's just a case of recording a track. So Audacity is perfect, you can download that, it's multi-platform, works very well on Windows, so let's use that. So I've already downloaded and installed that. If we look at the hardware, I've got my Audio-Technica 802020 USB Plus microphone, which happens to be the microphone that this person asked about anyway. I'm using a pop filter. I've got a recording booth, which I've put the microphone in so I can try and minimize some of the echoes in my very echoey room. And I've got a set of headphones, the Sony headphones, which I have plugged into the microphone because the microphone is an input and an output device. I can record through it and listen through it. So normally I would plug that in and use it just as my default device. But in this case, we're going to do something slightly different. So to look at your audio devices on Windows, you need to open up your control panel. So I've got the control panel here. I'm looking at it in the category view, if you want to see it in the same way that I'm seeing it. I then go to hardware and sound, and then I go to manage audio devices. And this is where I can have a look at what devices I'm going to use to record and to play back. So if we go to the recording tab first, you'll see that I've already got my microphone installed. It is not the default device any longer, but if we just click on it to have a look at the properties of it, when you first install a USB microphone on Windows, it's really important to come and have a look at the properties, especially the levels, and make sure that the level of the microphone is turned up because often you'll install it and it will have a very low level and then you'll wonder why it doesn't record very loud. So that's how you adjust the level. And if we look in the advanced setting, you'll see I've got it set up to record at CD quality, 16 bit, 44.1 kilohertz. It's not a 24 bit device, so I need to record at 16 bit. Now I did exactly the same thing with the headphone output on that microphone. Again, in the properties, you can look at the levels and you can look at the playback rate. Okay, so when you install Voice Meter, that also appears here as an audio device. So you will see that I have set Voice Meter as the default playback device and also, if we look down here, the default recording device because it's Voice Meter that I want to use for this purpose. And you'll see that as I'm speaking, you can see that my, the, my voice is being picked up by Voice Meter and we'll have a look at that in detail now. Okay, so we've done the control panel settings. Let's open up Voice Meter and have a look. You'll see that for hardware input one, I have selected from the choices I've got my USB microphone. And as I speak, you can see that the levels are moving around here because it's picking up my voice through the microphone. Now I'll just explain a little bit about what A and B are here. A is the routing to the hardware output. 
and B is the routing to the virtual output. Now, when we record in Audacity, when we choose voice meter as the recording device, we are going to be recording the virtual output of voice meter. So it's very important that your microphone is being channeled out to the virtual output. So it's important that B is highlighted. You'll see that I have unchecked A because this microphone you can direct monitor by plugging your headphones in and I don't want to hear it twice so I have not selected A here because I can hear it anyway. Now the virtual input is going to be what is heard when you play any system audio or backing music i.e YouTube and so we'll have a look at that in a minute. You'll notice that I have highlighted A and B because I want to hear through the headphones which I've selected here as my hardware output and I want it to go to the virtual output so it gets recorded as well. Okay, let's leave that up there and just have a look at my sample backing track. So I've created this myself for copyright reasons. Okay, so let's start playing it. And you should be able to hear that and also you can see that the levels are moving around here. So that's brilliant. Now what I've done here is I have turned it down slightly. You can just the level here and I've just turned it down a little bit so it's not too loud to speak on top of but you can obviously set it to your own preference here. So that's all working. Brilliant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize voice meter but I am not going to shut it. If you shut it it stops working so it's really important that you only minimize it. Okay let's start up Audacity. In Audacity it is so lovely and simple to start recording on any of the devices you've got installed. You just can select them from the drop down box here. So I'm going to select my voice meter here as my recording input and I'm going to select it as my output as well so that I can hear it. I'm going to pop my headphones on so I can hear what I'm doing. Turn the volume up on the microphone, right? So I can start to hear myself now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewind my backing track to the beginning. And all I need to do in Audacity is just start recording and it will immediately start recording. And then if I start playing the backing track, it will start recording that. And then if I speak into the microphone on top of that, it will start recording the microphone as well. Let's give it a go. So as you see, the backing track is being recorded here. And as I speak, you can see the level of audio being recorded is going up because it's picking up my voice as well. So let's do a little sample here. The backing track is playing and I'm recording on top. I mean, I'm just speaking, but I could just as easily sing or play a guitar or another acoustic instrument that could be picked up by the microphone on top of the backing track. Okay, and that's pretty much all there is to it. Let's have a playback of that just to hear it. Okay, so if I just put the or play a guitar or another acoustic instrument that could be picked up by the microphone on top of the backing track. Now obviously you might think, oh the backing track's a bit quiet there, maybe I could adjust the levels. That's for you to play with, but that's the basic way that you can record both your voice and the backing track into Audacity. Now the only problem with that is that we are recording everything onto one track and it could be that you'd like to have the backing track and your vocals on separate tracks so that you can treat them differently, maybe apply different effects to them and adjust the levels a bit. So let's have a look at how you would do that. It's slightly different. Okay, so we have covered how you can very basically record yourself and a YouTube backing track at the same time. But what happens if you would like to have a separate audio track of the backing and then your vocals on a different track. That's quite easy to do too. One thing you could do is with Audacity record the entire backing first and have that as a track. Another thing you can do is there are various services where you can upload a YouTube video and download the audio from it. I find those sites a little bit dodgy so I'm not going to necessarily recommend one but if you know how to do it you could do that. You could extract the audio I happen to have the audio of this track anyway because I created it. So what I'm going to do is I am going to import the backing track itself. But you'd have exactly the same thing in front of you if you just set Audacity recording 
the whole of the YouTube track before you started. Now you can see the levels in this are quite loud. One thing you can do here if you don't want to do any processing on the file is just turn the gain down or another thing you could do is select the whole file, go to effect, go to amplify and you could choose to reduce the volume of it a bit. So I'm going to take it down to minus 12 dB and you'll see as that processes, what we get left with is file that's the amplitude is not so high, so it's not going to be as loud just so that I can demonstrate for this purpose. If I go to the preferences, make sure in the recording preferences here that you have ticked this box to record on a new track so that when you start pressing that recording again, it will just create a new track for you to record straight into and it will record your vocal track and you can hear the backing track at the same time in the headphones but your voice will be recorded on a new track. So you'll have two separate things that you could process separately. So I'm going to demonstrate that here. So if I just press record, start to hear that backing track, just put my headphones on so I can hear it. This is my vocal track that I'm going to record on top of the backing track. So this is a little test section that I can play back in a minute and demonstrate exactly what I have done. So you can hear the backing track in the background and here I am. I could be singing again or speaking or playing an acoustic instrument into the microphone. Right, so let's stop that. So if I just start playing from here. So this is a little test section that I can play back in a minute and demonstrate exactly what I have done. So you can hear the backing track in the background and here I am. I could be singing. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to mute that backing track so that you can hear that on this second track, all I've got is the vocal that I can play back in a minute and demonstrate exactly what I have done. So you can hear the backing track in the background and here I am. Okay, so I'll just unmute that. So once you've got the project exactly how you like, you've got your backing track on one track, you've got your vocals or your instrument track on the other track and you want to combine them, or you've got all the processing done that you want to do and the levels and everything, you can simply go File, Export, and you can export the audio in a variety of formats ready to share. And so that is how you would record your audio on top of a YouTube backing track as two separate tracks in Audacity. Well, I hope you found that helpful. If you did, do give the video a like. It really helps me out. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to get more of my home recording tips and tricks. And do post any comments or questions. I really love to read them all and it does help me decide what kind of content I should produce to help you out. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.